I just wanted to share some of my thoughts and some of the initiatives that we took at the Lahore High Court in Punjab, where I was the Chief Justice before I was elevated to the Supreme Court, to show to you how we've built bridges amongst female and male judges in Pakistan and how gender sensitization has done wonders for us. You see, as a background, it's important to understand that we're a very male-dominated justice system. 14% uh, of our district judiciary is female judges, whereas at the constitutional level, at the constitutional court, we just have 5% of the judges who are female judges. And with two of our judges who are now from the constitutional court who are now in Buenos Aires, you can imagine that the country is working under 5% at the moment. So we, we realized the problem. We thought that while we're inducting male and female judges, they are working on their own. They seem to be working in isolation, like two distinct sets of people working in the same judicial system. They were not working as a team. They each harbored views against each other just on the basis of gender. They thought that they were male judges and they had all the positions, they had all the administrative positions, all the important cases were going to them and the female judges thought that they were somehow treated as lesser judges because they were not given the assignments they were supposed to be given, they were not marked important cases, so there was a bit of a, you know, a, a dysfunctional relationship between the two. We thought it was not good for the justice sector because if both the judges who are equally able are going to work like this, we cannot possibly deliver justice and have an efficient justice system. So we thought of looking into the concept of gender sensitization. And we thought that this characterization that we seem to have built on the basis of sex alone has to go. We need to start thinking of the person, we need to start thinking of the ability of the person rather than the sex itself. So we reached out to ADB and then also to IAWJ and I must thank them for the great effort they have done in helping us understand the subject, the issues and change, help in changing our mindset. So we started working on both the tiers. We thought we'd look at the workplace and see the gender issues at the workplace as well as in the courtroom because how a judicial mind also have to have uh, gender sensitivity in the courtroom. So first, let me just uh, share with you the workplace uh, concept. We felt that the judges, female judges, thought that they were being treated as lesser judges and they did not have uh, the kind of say that they should have had and they were not involved in most of the administrative work. And any system which is unjust, we thought, any system which at the workplace is unjust could not possibly produce just and fair judges because that would lead to frustration and could not lead to uh, effective judges who could dispense justice. So we came up with various policies. We came up with the gender policy ensuring that every female judge is part and parcel of the administrative decision-making committee. So every committee would have a female judge in it, one or more. And we came up with a gender posting and transfer policy, ensuring that female judges ought to be transferred and posted according, keeping in view geographical distances, the distances from their families, keeping in view where their spouses and families are working, keeping in view their children, keeping in view a number of other factors which would help them achieve uh, a place where they would be comfortable to work. We also looked at the international training, the local training, the international conferences and ensured that female judges would be part and parcel of any delegation, any training program and be a part and parcel of it. Most of the positions that were given were given were to the female judges. For example, the Judicial Academy was headed by a female judge. Districts were being headed by female judges and they were uh, instructors and directors at the academy were female judges. So we thought this was the kind of opening up that was required. Once the judicial reform started at the Lahore High Court, we ensured that in the think tanks that we constituted, we had all tiers of female judges as part and parcel of the reform agenda so that we realized what uh, issues are being faced by female judges and they could not be left out at the stage of reform at the High Court. So this was the kind of overall opening up where we brought female judges into the limelight, into the positions that they deserved to be in, and that kind of started developing a mindset 
that we all have to work together. That was connecting the dots and building the bridges between male and female judges. And side by side, ADB and then AWG help us train our judges, understand the issues of gender and the, the, the preconceived notions we seem to have attached with sex had to go and they did go. And I think a, a very good example of this opening up is the fact that 20 of our judges are with you right now in Buenos Aires, which itself uh, marks the fact that uh, uh, we, we've, we've started looking at things very differently. This is perhaps the largest delegation that has come out of the country, and I think I'm very proud of this fact. Coming over to the uh, administ uh, judicial side and the courtroom, a truly healthy and forward-looking judicial mind has to be gender sensitive. There's no doubt about it. A litigant of any gender must not feel threatened or deprived or uncomfortable while approaching the doors of justice or being in a courtroom. All victims and witnesses, female or male, whether they be lesbians, gay, bisexual, transgender or intersex, must have equal access to justice. We also stress that majority of victims of inequality and discrimination and violence are women in our society in comparison to men. And this sensitivity had to be built in. in infrastructurally, we went ahead and established a gender-based violence court. This court is sensitive to the needs of all vulnerable victims and witnesses of gender-based violence, which includes children. GBV courts are uh, the victims are greeted and assisted by female support officers. They can give their evidence using a TV monitor without having to be in the courtroom. Practice guidelines requiring appropriate questioning by lawyers to ensure questions are not degrading and humiliating. Court orders are also made for their security and protection and GBV cases are being fast-tracked to minimize delays. Similarly, We've established child care courts to ensure that children are also, who are also, who are offenders are also treated with sensitivity throughout the process. Justice Alia Neelam, who's there from the High Court, is monitoring these courts and doing a wonderful job at it. So in the end, I would like to say that the 20 female judges from the districts are here with you and everyone has a story to tell. I encourage them to frankly share their sense of empowerment with you all. The two High Court judges will tell you how they played a pivotal role in redesigning administrative structures of the court hand in hand with male judges. Justice Aisha Malik, who is there, is one of the leading lights that has brought about this change and my salutes to her too. I thank, uh, I think we are getting there, I am very sure that we have got there. Thanks to the wonderful support and encouragement of IAWJ. Have a wonderful conference, all of you. All the lady judges from Pakistan, we are very proud of you. And it's a privilege to have worked with you. Don't forget to take time out and enjoy Buenos Aires. God bless you all. All the best.